Hi guys, thanks for hanging out with us today. We're the Certified Nurse Midwives of Evergreen Women's Health, and I am Stacy Hanna. And I'm Colby Wade. So apparently somebody thought it'd be fun for us to do a little game. So we just have some questions, common questions for midwives and OB care, and we just thought we'd give it a go. All right, Stacy, you ready? Sure. All right, let's do yours first one. How long have you been practicing? Oh, well, I have been a practicing nurse midwife for over two years now, but prior to that, I was a labor and delivery nurse for almost 11 years. So I've been in the field for a long time and... You kind of know yeah. what you're doing. I am just a little bit. Just a little bit. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. What's it say? Can I hear the baby's heartbeat? When? 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 Oh, sorry. When can I hear the baby's heartbeat? Great question. So yeah, the big question. A lot of people want to know about this. We say typically around 12 weeks. It depends on different people, different babies, um, but that's around the time. Um, definitely, you know, as your baby's growing after 12 weeks, more likely to hear the baby's heartbeat. All right, your turn again. How many appointments will I have? So a good starting point is you first come in when you find out you're pregnant and you meet with one of the nurses and you do what's called an intake. And so they ask questions about your history, you gather labs, then you meet with the sonographer and have a dating ultrasound. And then after that, you meet with us monthly until the third trimester. So about 12 weeks, 16 weeks, 20, 24, 28. And then after that, every other week, and at 36 weeks and beyond, every week until delivery. And then, of course, depending on your particular pregnancy and situation, you may have to come a little bit more often, but that's kind of a good, a good starting point. So what do you call a male midwife? Wow, I've never gotten this question before. Well, actually, um, midwife means with woman, so it's actually referring to the patient as a female, not the male, so you call a male midwife a midwife because we're talking about the patient, not the provider. Yeah. All righty, your turn. Should I make any lifestyle changes? Obviously, anything you can do to prepare beforehand is an ideal situation, but sometimes pregnancy happens unplanned. And so, you know, for starters, just in general, ensuring good general health, so good nutrition, good exercise. Um, stopping smoking if you are a smoker. Um, prenatal vitamins are really important. Those have, well, what we like about them is the extra folic acid and iron that you will inevitably need during pregnancy. So it is nice to definitely start those. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people don't realize, but before you even know you're pregnant, the prenatal vitamins can be important. So if mm -hmm. you're trying to get pregnant, definitely start mm -hmm. taking those prenatal vitamins. When? Do I worry about pregnancy-related disorders? Ooh, that's a tough that one. That is a tough one. <laughs> um, when do you, uh, hopefully you don't worry about it too much, and we're here to kind of walk you through what kind of disorders can happen, but it just kind of depends on what happens throughout your pregnancy. You know, if there's a certain point where we feel like you're at a higher risk for something, we'll talk to you about that at that point. Um, but, you know, we'll keep you up to date on things that are happening at different stages in your pregnancy. And if we think something, you know, is happening, we'll have a conversation with you about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't worry too much about certain things because a lot of stuff that can happen in pregnancy. Most of the time, it goes great. Alrighty. What antenatal classes are there? Oh, well, we just talked about this in Quite another recently. clip, so you should check out the website and YouTube and all, all the places, Facebook too, but we have what's called uh, our Beautiful Beginnings class. So it is a provider-led prenatal, perinatal, postpartum, and newborn uh, class that we offer to the community, and it is free. It's once a quarter on Tuesdays, six weeks long. Um, yeah, and it's open to anybody. Like I said, you don't have to be an evergreen patient, so anybody can join, and it's a great place to just come and either talk to other people who are around your gestational age and get your pregnancy-related questions answered. It's a great resource. Just definitely recommend it. All right. How can I involve my partner? As much as you want. So, <laughs> yeah, it just really depends on, you know, your availability, your partner's availability. I love when partners show up to visits with their um, significant others. It's it's really cool seeing them involved, but I understand, you know, people have different work um, schedules and whatnot. So, 
you know, at any time they can be involved. If you want them involved, then bring them along to your visits. They're welcome in the hospital. Um, for the prenatal classes she was just talking about, we love having partners there or support people or whoever is going to be your person throughout this pregnancy. Um, so as much as you want them to be involved, we'd love to have them there with you. And to kind of piggyback off of that, it's also, you know, in the hospital setting during the labor and postpartum care, we are really good at giving partners jobs. So if you are not sure what your partner can do, we will find something for them to exactly. do for you. <laughs> All right, your last question. Who do I contact if I think labor is starting? So there are actually a few different ways you can do this. So the first one would be you just show up to the family birthplace. They're obviously open 24 hours a day. So a lot of times patients will show up thinking you know, that they are in labor or whatever the question might be. And then the nursing staff can kind of triage the situation and then they contact the providers. Another way is you can call our um, answering service line and then there is always a provider available day and night, weekend, doesn't matter, holiday. There's always one of us available. So we can also triage the, the what's going on and let you know if we think you should go to the hospital or if you should wait or what you should do. Yeah, and really big thing too is that, you know, we talk about this in your visits too. Like, you know, what to expect, you know, what things are more likely labor, what things are more likely not. So we try to prepare you for those situations as well. But like Stacy said, if you're kind of in between, don't really know what's going on, feel free to give us a call and we'll just tell you what we think. Okay, last one. Here's the big one. What happens if my labor slows down? Well, that's a great question. So it kind of depends on where you are. You know, I mean, this is kind of what we were talk we were just talking about, you know, how do, what do you do? How do you know if you're in labor? Sometimes people, you know, think they're in labor outside of the hospital, you know, haven't gone in yet, and then it slows down. And then if, if that's the case, then you probably, you know, weren't in labor, so it's okay just to keep living your life. But if you're, you know, confused, talk to us, like we said. But if we're in the hospital, you know, the process has already gotten started. Um, there's a couple different options. You know, if, if it's truly not labor and, you know, nothing's happening and baby's looking great, you're nice and healthy, you can go home. Otherwise, um, if there's other things going on or if we're, you know, in deeper than um, it would be safe to allow you to go home at that point, then we talk about different options um, for augmenting your labor, doing, using different medications or other means to um, help your labor go along faster and get you a baby. All right, well, thanks for joining us today playing this game. We had a great time. I'm Colby Wade. I'm Stacey Hanna. And we're the certified nurse midwives at Evergreen Women's Health.